What we're going to be looking at is precipitation, which we looked at briefly yesterday but didn't record anything. Um, so what we've got is two chemicals and we're going to react them. We've been given this template to write things out. The first chemical we've got is called copper 2 sulfate. So for that, we just write that name, solution 1, so we write that in our box. The cation is copper 2, so we write that up the top. And at the bottom, the anion is the sulfate. Now if you're unsure what it is, check with me and I'll tell you what to write in there. The other chemical we're going to use for this experiment is to have sodium carbonate being mixed with it. So that's solution number two. So I write sodium at the top and carbonate below it. Now the trick is to mix them together. So what we're going to do is we can choose either one. The easiest way is solution one goes into the test tube. So I'm going to pour a little bit of solution one into the test tube. Just a little bit. So you can see it's not much up on the screen. It's just a little bit at the bottom. And then I'm going to add a few drops of the other chemical. So solution two, I'm going to only add a few drops to it. So there we go. And we see that it goes a bit cloudy. So that means it's made a solid. So it's going from two solutions, clear things, to having it go cloudy, which means there is a precipitate. So we know there is a precipitate. So the observation is that we from a blue solution, so the blue solution turned into a blue precipitate, or a blue solid, or went cloudy. So blue solution, went cloudy. That's enough. I know I've given you three lines, but that's enough for an observation. Okay? Then what we have to do is work out what's happened. And we know that a solid is made, so we know that it was a precipitate. So I'm just going to put a wee tick next to where it says if precipitate formed. I'm going to put a wee tick there just to tell myself that I'm going to need to circle something in a moment. Right, here's my next step. I need to work out what the things that are made are called. Now this is a really simple thing, it's just chopping and changing things. You're going to put this word with this word on the right hand side. So that becomes copper 2 carbonate. Then we're going to put this word, and of course my pen decides not to work at that, with this word and that becomes sodium sulfate. Now I'm not going to change the page here but I want you all of you to go back to the cover sheet. On the cover sheet you have got a list of rules in a box. Okay? It's like a table, the list of rules. It says something about carbonates and it says something about sulfates. What does it say about sulfates? All sulfates are soluble except So BASO4, PBSO4, and CASO4. So they are barium, lead, and calcium. The thing that's made is that one of those three is this one here that I'm circling. One of those three that are not soluble? No. Okay, so that one hasn't made the precipitate. The soluble means that it will dissolve. It'll make the solution. Okay, let's look at carbonates. What does it say about carbonates? All carbonates are insoluble. insoluble. Oh, okay. So this suggests that maybe this one's insoluble. There are some soluble ones though. What are the soluble ones? K2OC3. All right, so the K and the Na ones. We started with the Na one, so that explains why that one was a solution. But K. 2CO3 is potassium carbonate. This is not potassium carbonate. So therefore, this stuff in here must be an insoluble carbonate, so it must be this one. So I'm going to circle that one now as being, whoops, as being my insoluble thing or my precipitate. 
So when I explain this, what I say is, even though the sulfate product, so product two, is soluble, product one, copper two, carbonate, is insoluble. That is why it is a precipitate. Now if you want to go more sciencey on this, it is because the attraction between the copper ions and the carbonate ions are stronger than their attraction for the water. So they're not going to stay in solution. So I'm going to give you the really fancy answer written on here. Okay, so the explanation is the attraction between copper 2 ions and carbonate ions is stronger than with water. Now what's the formula for water? H2O. We're going to be chemists now, let's use that symbol. Then with H2O. This makes the precipitate. Copper to carbonate. And now we've finished this first bit of understanding on why a precipitate forms. You get to choose any two chemicals from the front page to mix together to do for experiment two. And then if you go over the page, three and four and five and six. Are there any questions on what you have to do there? Alright, so just a quick recap. Get one solution, call it solution one. Put its first name in the top box, its second name in the second box. Get another chemical, call that solution two. The first name goes in the top box, the second name in the bottom box. Then, put about half a centimetre of solution one into a test tube, add a few drops of solution two, and observe what happens. Doesn't matter what one goes first? No, it doesn't. Doesn't matter which one goes first, you should get the same sort of reaction. Okay? Good question. Then, after you've done it, you do the thing called the word equation. This is the word equation here. This is our word equation. Then, after the word equation, you circle the one that made the solid using the rules on the front first page, and then you explain it talking about attraction between ions. Is it always like on that angle? Is it yes, it is. It's always crossing over. Okay. Good. So you'll notice I used colours to help me. You might want to do the same thing. All right. Any other questions?